What movie death scene is burned into your memory? When the bad guy kills the shoe by dipping it into the goo and who framed Roger Rabbit. That one is so fucking terrible. Man, if you think about it those two oons don't even have the notion of what death is. When a tune is shot in his face they just get real dirty or, worst case scenario, turn into a cartoon angel only to come back to normal by next week. Not that shoe, though, the shoe is gone forever. It's the first and only one of their kind to ever meet total oblivion and just die for good. That's gotta be a doozy. Fun fact for anyone who doesn't know, the dip in who framed Roger Rabbit is described as being a combination of turpentine, acetone, and benzene, combined in the real world. These paint thinning ingredients make up the solution that hand animators use to remove ink from animation cells. The young man in front of his father in Pan's Labyrinth, Brutal, Edit, thanks for the silver and the um, wholesome awards, I don't know if I don't understand the meaning of them or people of Reddit are a very sick strange bunch, probably both. Kurtwood Smith's voice when he finds Neil's body, just thinking about it now is giving me chills, so much sorrow and desperate regret. His character spent the entire movie being a classic mid-century abusive and autocratic father, and then he just breaks into pieces when he realizes his son is now permanently beyond his reach. He'll never chastise him again, never guide him, never see him smile or hear him slam the door to the fridge or see him graduate or get married or have kids. And in that one moment, in his voice, you can hear him realizing that it wasn't worth it. That the price was too high and he'd take it all back if he could. Being the man he was in the time he was, he papers over the cracks in his soul pretty quickly. And I'd be surprised if he and his wife speak more than a hundred words to each other over the coming decade. He'll shrivel up inside, and be dead from that day forward. Because he lacks the ability to internalize what his mistakes helped bring about. He won't become a kinder, gentler man because he can't, but he will suffer, every day for the rest of his life, because he knows deep down that none of what he thought mattered was anywhere near as important as his son's life. Kurtwood Smith is an amazing and underrated actor, is what I'm saying. Something I read on Reddit in a similar thread, that I refuse to fact check because it makes me feel better is that every single actor on set played with that baby every time the camera cut because it was such a heavy scene. Apparently the baby was just super stoked to get all the attention and it helped the actors and crew deal with it. Edit, I took a risk and googled it and it's true. According to the twins who played the baby, we weren't on the set a lot but, when we were, apparently everyone was a bit more relaxed and all doing baby stuff with us. So it helped to take away a lot of the tension from filming such hard scenes. Oh oof, I didn't remember the exact words said only him pleading. I knew it was my dog's final day when he couldn't move at all. When my attempts to help him up didn't work I remember being so desperate and scared that I was yelling and begging him to get up and move. He passed away a couple months ago. Always will be my best boy. Not a movie. But there was an episode of MASH I saw as a kid that traumatizes me to this day. The whole episode, which I haven't seen since I was about 9 so forgive any incorrect details, is about a group of army and civilians hiding from the enemy. One lady has a chicken, and they keep telling her to keep it quiet because if it gives away their position they'll all be dead. We find out she smothered the chicken to death to save everyone. But the horror twist is that the soldier telling the story had replaced the actual source of the noise, her human baby, with a chicken because it was so horrible. I have children now and the thought of making that choice makes me sick to my stomach. Yes, and it finishes of his arc so well, initially headstrong and dismissive of the ring's lore, succumbing to it for that instant then wanting to redeem himself protecting the hobbits. The fact the first thing he says when Aragorn gets to him isn't his big my captain, my king or some gander stuff, it's they've taken the little ones thinking of the innocent before anyone or himself. 
absolutely perfect. For me the scene from this movie I can't get out of my mind is from the landing sequence. The first moment when the transport door falls open and a whole bunch of men are just sitting there as large caliber machine gun fire floods the boat and shreds all the men, body parts and blood flying everywhere. I can't ever forget that scene. Every death in that movie was fucking horrifying. The dude who was still alive with his back flayed open and chickens eating him alive, horrifying. The one dude who was killed and his face skinned and then worn as a mask to kill another dude, horrifying, trapped in a bear skin and burned alive while a creepy ass cult and your girlfriend watch, horrifying. Ike what is about that scene? I have watched a lot of horror movies, war movies, sad dramas, but there is something about that scene that sticks out, maybe the nice, serene music, romantic night at sea, people happily dancing, I just can't forget that wire and then bodies falling down, and if I recall correctly Cube has similar scene with some cables slicing people and few other similar scenes in other movies, but nothing came close to this one. <laughs> Mrs. Landingham, I miss my boys, Charlie. I never knew you had kids, Mrs. Landingham, twins, Andrew and Simon. I tried not to you know, I dressed them differently, but they still did everything together. They went off to medical school together, and then they finished their second year, and of course their lottery number came up at the same time. Charlie, for the draft, Mrs. Landingham, yeah, Charlie, well. I would have thought they could get the deferment to finish med school, Mrs. Landingham. They didn't want one, their father and I begged them, but they wanted to go where people needed doctors, their father and I begged them, but you can't tell kids anything, so they joined up as medics, and four months later they were pinned down during a fight in DA9 and were killed by enemy fire. That was Christmas Eve, 1970, you know, they were so young. Charlie, they were your age, it's hard when that happens so far away, you know, because with the noises and the shooting, they had to be so scared, it's hard not to think that right then, they needed their mother, anyway, I miss my boys, scene, https colon slash slash dot b slash cc fluski. Dear fellas, I can't believe how fast things move on the outside. I saw an automobile once when I was a kid, but now they're everywhere. The world went and got itself in a big damn hurry. The parole board got me into this halfway house called the Brewer, and a job bagging groceries at the food way. It's hard work. I try to keep up, but my hands hurt most of the time. I don't think the store manager likes me very much. Sometimes after work I go to the park and feed the birds. I keep thinking Jake might just show up and say, hello, but he never does. I hope wherever he is, he's doing okay and making new friends. I have trouble sleeping at night. I have bad dreams, like I'm falling. I wake up scared. Sometimes it takes me a while to remember where I am. Maybe I should get me a gun and rob the food way, so they'd send me home. I could shoot the manager while I was at it. Sort of like a bonus. I guess I'm too old for that sort of nonsense anymore. I don't like it here. I'm tired of being afraid all the time. I've decided not to stay. I doubt they'll kick up any fuss. Not for an old crook like me. Everyone talks about this scene when they mention hereditary and I 100% agree that it's harrowing. But that scene where Tony Klett's headless corpse floats into the treehouse was so visually disturbing to me, I'd cry. I couldn't stop thinking about it for weeks. Oh gosh, I knew I was gonna see the head but wasn't ready yet and then when they showed it, I still wasn't ready. Ah, uh, uh, that movie was so messed up. Definitely gave me a good scare that night. I watched it with my ex. I remember while we were going to bed, we thought we saw someone in the corner. The mother crawling on the ceiling definitely tricked my brain that night. Haha. <laughs> That's my absolute favorite quote of the entire Star Wars saga. In so few words, tells you so much about Vader. The original trilogy and everything that Vader and Anakin meant as characters. 
Shout out to dot 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 I'm no Jedi by Ahsoka in SW, Rebels, my second place. Sebastian Shaw and Ashley Eckstein are treasures for the franchise. The death of the personal assistant in that Jurassic World movie, a complete side character that did nothing wrong, barely in a few scenes, gets likely the most graphic and prolonged death in the entire franchise. They really made sure to show you how terrified she was and how brutally she died. It was literally like 90 seconds on screen watching her struggle in agony and terror before being swallowed. It was honestly kinda fucked up, especially because there was a comedic moment immediately before and after the scene. It's like they want you to somehow enjoy watching this completely innocent side character die horribly. The thing that got me was that frankly, those kids were old enough not to need a minder. They're 16 and 11, and in a supposedly safe amusement park, give them some magic wristbands or whatever to allow them unlimited rides and some credits for food or snacks and you're good to go. There was no reason to make her poor assistant chase a kid two years away from legal adulthood all over the park. It's no wonder they ditch her as soon as possible. Really, the character didn't need to exist at all, or if she did, she should have been doing something else. Littlefoot's mom in the land before time. When I first saw it as a kid it was the first time that I realized that my parents could die. That thought had never even really occurred to me at that point. Even now as an adult that scene where he thinks he sees her but it's just his shadow and the narrator says, then Littlefoot knew for certain he was alone, is still burned in my memory. This one fucked me up. It's like two full minutes of on-screen bleed out as they realize the severity of the situation. He finally asks if he's dying, and the older soldier has to admit to him as well as to himself that he is indeed dying. Especially because it was mentioned that the older soldier had another younger soldier die on his watch, too. Fucking rough. Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring. When Baromir dies whilst defending Merry and Pippin, something about him keeping them safe, even when he was shot three times, to make up for what he had done trying to take the ring from Frodo. Then his conversation with Aragorn as he lays dying, and he recognizes him as Gondor's king. This one is out of left field. But in Return of the Jedi there is a scene during the forest fight when the Empire is just cleaning everyone's clock. There is a scene where two oaks get knocked off their feet due to an explosion. One gets up and turns to the other one, but they won't get up. The walk makes a sad noise and I'm pretty sure I heard them say mama, mama. I don't know why but that stuck with me. Those older Christmas movies were brutal. I remember one with the bunny and his mom and a snowstorm came and they didn't get shelter. So the mom wrapped herself around her baby bunny while it snowed. Then spring came and the baby bunny crawled from under his mom and tried to wake her. But she was dead. I cried for hours. Don't even remember the rest of the movie. I think I was eight. I get that the whole series was for young teenagers. But there is just something I find so morbidly fascinating about the Hunger Games. Really wish they capitalized on the series and made Netflix shows surrounding it when Battle Royale games were huge. There's just so much history there that was just never explored until some of it was explored in the prequel book. I can't decide if I like or hate the way the movie did it. On the one hand, it's basically what the entire series was leading up to since Katniss volunteered just to save her. To make it such a quick moment and the movie didn't do the gravity of the metaphor, is that the right word? Justice. On the other hand, it really would happen that quickly and just glossing over it like the movie kind of did was more realistic and left you with more of a what the fuck feeling. Glenn's death was damn brutal. Lizzie's death was actually the one that made me cry more than any other scene in more than seven seasons of The Walking Dead though. That was until episode 8 by 09 came around. That one absolutely broke me. I'm still watching it though, and I still love it. It got a lot better from season 9 onwards. But I swear, the many deaths of this show. 
Funny thing is that was ripped straight from the comic, only difference is the show added Abraham's death to that moment. There's an alternate take that was filmed where Maggie is killed in his place so it seems like the writers considered keeping him around that on point, would have made for good character development had he slowly devolved to a cold, ruthless killer. And yet she does break down, however rap in rage it might have been, regardless of how calm she seemed, she breaks cover, not because it is tactically necessary or wise, but because it would get her killed, it's one when everyone else has gone down and she's still marginally capable of fighting that she pulls it back together. It's a remarkably human moment from a character who generally had to be the stoic voice of calm reason. Andy Serkis's death in King Kong, one of the most disgusting deaths I have seen, and since I hate bugs it just makes me squirm every time I think about it. Fun fact about the scene, apparently, he forgot about his death scene and brought his children, Dirk they were really young, like 8-10 years old or so, to the pre-screening event and absolutely terrified them when they saw their dad get eaten by slug monsters. In Midsommar when the old folks jump off a cliff and then someone comes by with a sledgehammer to put them out of their misery, and they show everything, then the scene in Midsommar when they discover the guy blood eagled in a yurt still breathing, then there is this scene in this movie Midsommar where a guy is paralyzed, sawn into the skin of a bear and then burned alive, oh, lastly. There is this one scene in Midsommar where all the people who were previously killed in horrible ways were stuffed with straw as human scarecrows and burnt with a guy inside a bear. Another death scene was this bear who was in a cage in Midsommar and you don't know why he is in the cage in the middle of this commune until the end, when he is hollowed out so he can be filled with paralyzed man who is then burnt alive with his already dead scarecrow friends. Edit. I forgot the first scene in this movie Midsommar where you see this middle-aged couple sleeping comfy in their bed, only to be taken to the garage where you see a bunch of tubes connected to a running car's exhaust. The tubes fill the house with carbon monoxide and you learn the parents have died in their sleep. Then you see that another tube is taped directly on one of their daughter's faces so she could commit murder-suicide. Second edit, I used to love horror movies, then I saw this movie called Midsommar. I loved Sirius Black and was so sad when he died, but honestly, the HP film death that struck me most was Cedric Diggory. I didn't care much for the character but when his dad discovers he's dead and starts screaming my boy, I honestly start tearing up a little thinking about it now. The thing about the book that really gets me is just how angry Harry Potter is afterwards at himself. Like Dumbledore is so calm but Harry has all this rage and just starts trashing Dumbledore's office. It's also so heartbreaking because it was so avoidable. Harry went on this mission to save Sirius whom he believed to be in danger, but was actually being tricked, and Sirius dies coming to save Harry. And what's even worse, is that after Sirius dies Harry finds the gift Sirius gave him, in the book. I believe they cut this out in the movie, that he never opened because they had a fight, and turns out Sirius gifted him a magical mirror that lets them communicate. If he had only opened his gift he would have been able to confirm he was okay and the whole thing would have never happened. Gets me every time too. It trips me apart every time I read it. Harry was so close to having it all. So close to getting to live with Sirius. Fudge saw Voldemort. He would have been a free man and could rightfully take guardianship of Harry. So many later deaths could have been avoided too. The Order wouldn't have had to do the extraction from Priv Drive in Deathly Hallows if he was already living in Order Headquarters. So Hedwig lives and so does Mad Eye. That scene where Cedric's father screams I think is one of the best scenes out there in film. It feels so true and real and it never fails to make me cry. It's so heartbreaking to see him scream and mourn for his son. I watched it the other day and just, it always breaks me. Jeff Rall is just amazing there. Even worse, 
He was amazed and impressed because he'd just heard Percy make a joke, his remark about resigning from the ministry while battling the Imperia's current minister, and the twins loved their jokes, and uptight Percy never made jokes, and seemed to look on them with distaste. It's like they actually finally connected with each other on a personal level, a split second before Fred was killed.